Okay, here we go. Right, but that's why I'm not recording it on Google Meet. Okay, so a couple things. In the old days, we would have a drafting table, and this is pre-computer. So actually, I was in high school, I think before I touched a computer for an actual project that needed done. And even that was just like, hey, here's a thing you could use, and we never used it. And then even in college, didn't really use a computer a lot. Isn't that weird? So I bought my first computer in college, and it was like $3,000 for something that is very low end now. So it's, it's kind of a, just a different world. You're gonna have your paper. You actually have a box on yours. You're gonna make a tower based on your brainstorm sketches. Um, so back to the drafting table here. We would put it on a table. We wouldn't put it crooked like you're viewing it if you're standing here with me. But we would actually take a T-square and a T-square would be a, a device that would allow us to find a 90 degree angle. And that 90 we would square up to the, to the paper's edge to the table. So whenever I put my T-square against the table edge, then it would make a vertical or a horizontal angle correctly based off of the table. So the table was a tool we used. Then you'd have triangles, rulers, that kind of stuff, compasses, and there's a lot of other drafting tools as well. This is called a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle because you have a 30, excuse me, a 30, a 60, and a 90. Okay, and they also have right triangles with 45s and 90s. So it's like preset angles and, and there's other ones you can get too. So what we're gonna do, this is the way I would go about it. I would start with a bottom horizontal line, okay? And you have a box on your paper you can use as your bottom horizontal line. So it's already there for you. And um, the other thing I might do, especially if you want this perfect, is tape this paper down. I'm kind of rusty here, I haven't done this in a while. And they would tape the page down so it wouldn't move around on you as, as you drew. So you could take tape if you wanted to and tape it down and so that it's gonna stay put for you, okay? I'm using a marker so you guys can see it better, but you're gonna probably wanna use pencil and then control the weight of your line. If, if you're trying to decide where something goes, make a light line. And once you've established that it's a line you wanna use, darken it in so that you can actually see it. We'll photocopy these then, and you'll have a couple copies of it that you can build your tower right on top of here. So I don't know if one of you can grab that cardboard with a drawing and a tower right there and kind of slide that down here. Thanks. Um, so essentially what we're gonna do, you'll see we'll have cardboard with a drawing on it, and this will serve as a template. So if I'm gonna cut something, I can lay my stick right on there, measure an angle and cut it and put it together precisely. And then we can get something that's very accurate. If it's not accurate when you draw it, it's not gonna be accurate when you build it. And if you don't build it on top of your drawing, your sides are gonna not match each other and it's not gonna to go together. Because going from 2D or a flat truss to 3D is a big jump in difficulty, okay? So you might find that this is deceivingly difficult. I think kids find that it's difficult. Ooh, there's a hair. And it's not mine, you know how I know? Because I don't have any. Okay. Well, technically you do. Well, I guess. All right, so put a horizontal line at the bottom. It doesn't matter if it's too big. Like if it's longer than my tower's width, that's fine. And then we're looking to put a vertical line in here. And so we're going to use our 30, 60, 90, and I'm going to line this up. I'm just going to guess on where the center of this is because I have plenty of paper. And you can see I'm aligned with the bottom with my ruler, and then I'm putting my ruler against my triangle which is going to give me a perfect vertical line according to how i drew this line which is now that i look at it pretty crooked but at least these will be perpendicular to each other perpendicular as you probably know means at a 90. so i'm putting a line down the middle which i actually don't have a line down the middle of my tower but i'm going to use it to um, allow me to make symmetry whatever I do to the left, I'm gonna to do to the right, okay? And I put my little symbol in there, meaning it's perpendicular at a 90 degrees. So what are the limitations on height? Does anybody remember? Um, eight inches is the highest, and seven mm -hmm. is the smallest. Yeah, so seven to eight inches high, and you're gonna draw this in inches, so make sure you're on the inches, and you should see a ruler that's divided up into sixteenths of an inch, 16 spaces for every inch. That's English um, measurement, okay? And there's rulers on the countertop behind you, and they get put back there at cleanup time 
at the end of the day, okay? Or at the end of the period. So I'm gonna measure down to the height that I want. I'm gonna go in the middle. I'm gonna go seven and a half. And then that way, if I have to do something additional on top of this later, I've got a little room to play without going over my eight. Okay, so I'm gonna mark seven and a half, and I'm gonna mark it at zero, which establishes my height. I also need to establish the width at the bottom, and if you recall, there's a three inch circle that's gonna fit inside the bottom. So I wanna go at least one and a half inches this way, and try not to shake the table if you can, and an inch and a half this way. So I'm gonna add a tiny bit. I don't need to go three inches and three inches and make the bottom gigantic. You just need to barely accomplish the goal. So here's an inch and a half, and then I'll just add an eighth to that and make a mark. This table's still shaking. So there's inch and five eighths, inch and five eighths. Now here could be a mistake. When you, when you draw your tower, you draw it with the stick on the inside, which is gonna make it smaller versus the stick on the outside. You might wanna draw it with the stick on the outside, okay? And then we're gonna establish the width at the top. Remember, there's a metal plate gonna go on top of there, and that is an inch and seven eighths. I would highly recommend that you make it smaller than an inch and seven eighths. So I'm gonna do inch and three quarter, I'm sorry, I'm gonna do three quarters and three quarters. <laughs> so we're gonna go like this, three quarters all the way over to inch and a half, because three quarter plus three quarter is an inch and a half, okay? So there we go. And now we gotta establish this angle if you want an angle. You don't have to do it this way, this is just one way to do it, okay? So as long as you are following the limitations, you can do anything else you want. So for example, I never said you had to have a four-sided tower. That's not a rule, right? So as long as you can fit the three and circle in there, then you can do anything you want. Here's the problem with the three-sided tower, and you might wanna be careful of this. If this were a three inch circle, which it's not, okay, your triangle at the bottom is gonna have to go around the circle. So you'll have to calculate what side or what length side that has to be to make your three inch circle. And we almost have the Deathly Hallows here, don't we? For any Harry Potter fans that are out there. Um, so how long is that? And I can tell you it's not three inches. Three inches won't um, what's called circumscribe around a circle. Okay, so you'll have to calculate that out before you would design a three-sided tower. But it is possible to do that, okay? So I'm gonna mark, and I'm gonna use a stick as a template so I make this accurate. So if you wanna grab a couple sticks to help you draw, this will help you make it uh, as a template. So this will be the left side of my top, and this will be the right side of my top. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. Right side, left side. And mine's not as precise as it would be with a pencil, but I'm doing it so you can see it very well, okay? So if you were doing it with a pencil, we're talking little, tiny, accurate marks. And down here, remember, I have a little over three inches, so I'm gonna go outside of this so it makes it bigger than what I need, not smaller than what I need. So instead of trying to measure all this, I'm just using the stick as a template. And then you just connect your lines, so left to left, right to right. And you use a straight edge to connect all this. You don't put a stick here and trace it real messy, okay? So there's a nice straight line, and then you line up your other two marks here. And one thing I'm gonna be looking at as I grade it, I'm gonna put a stick on here and see, does that look like the actual material? Or is it real skinny, or is it real fat, or is it tapered? It's different at the top than the bottom. So that needs to look like you see right here. And we're hand drawing, which may seem outdated compared to computer drawing, but there's still really a place for this, for things that we don't need a computer for, okay? And then figure out what you wanna do at the top. So again, don't trace sticks. So if you want something tying these together at the top, mark where it's gonna go, and then use your straight edge to connect lines. Anytime you possibly can, do not freehand anything. Okay, and we're gonna do the bottom. I'm gonna tie the bottom together too. You don't have to, but somebody's really challenging me down there with the moving of the table. You're really challenging my abilities, which is good. I like a good challenge. And so far it looks pretty good, even though the table is shaking like crazy from someone, I don't know who. All right. <laughs> So then, what structure were you going to use from 
your brainstorm sketches. You know, if you're gonna if you were gonna put a stick like that, for example, again, don't trace, but just mark the width of this. How wide is it? And then you're gonna use your ruler actually to connect these um, dots. And I'm gonna just go ahead and while I've got this here and knock this out too. And then again, oh, that's a little tapered, but I'm gonna look that this represents the stick, okay? And then I'm gonna show you what not to do here in a second. I heard that. <laughs> okay, so you got that. Here, that's what I'm want, wanting in a drawing, but you're gonna use your own design. Here's what I don't want. So let's say I wanted one here, and kids will get kind of lazy, and they'll be like, mm, there, I did it. Okay, not good, so don't do that, all right? And then we need three dimensions, call them dims, okay? To prove that it's right, and we want the width at the top, so you use your ruler, and this is called an extension line and dimension lines. So we mark those. Okay, you could even use them for the arrowheads like this. This makes things highly accurate. And now I'm gonna pretend I'm using my ruler. Okay, and you're gonna put this in here and you're gonna measure what it is. One and a half inches. Mark the top. You're gonna mark the inside base at the bottom. So I'm using my ruler again, but through the magic of television, I'm speeding it up. And then put the measurement on here, which I'm not sure what it is, so I'm gonna measure it. It is three and a quarter. Okay, and then the height. So definitely, because this is farther left than the top, I'm gonna extend over like this with my dimension line. This extension line does not touch the drawing. And then we go from, you know, up and down right here. And then we put the height. What did we do, seven and a half? Uh, yeah. Okay, and then your name would go on here, all right? A little, nice little decoration, and you've got it, and then you'll be able to copy it and build on top of there, okay? So that's what we're gonna do today and tomorrow, but today we're a little bit cut short, so you can just get started on it, and then put it in your bin when you're done, and can finish it up tomorrow, okay? Oh, 